Oh, no one knows. No one knows. Not even my coworkers know. Um, I know. I think my manager knows and HR and all them they know, but none of my coworkers know. And that's like they found out yesterday because I told them that I was like I'm predominantly attracted to men, and I phrased it in that way without saying like I'm bisexual, like. Because the Lutheran women of something something, like an, a, an organization of Lutheran rim, women, made um, they brought like twenty boxes of donuts to the nursing home, and they made like little uh, crafty like homemade magnets for all the workers there. And mine said like Lars is a chick magnet because it was a magnet with like a little um, little uh, pom pom like ch baby chick on it. And I was like, just laughing at it. And I went up to my group of coworkers, I'm like, I'm not straight. <laughs> so, because like, they, they think I'm straight, because based on their comments, and I'm like, you, okay, how? <laughs> but, but I know like when I'm around like straight people that it's like a defense that I have, is like I act cis and I act straight. And it's just kind of like a defense I have. I can't like act myself. I like kind of overcompensate, and I hate it. And then my voice goes lower, and I act kind of like more manly, I guess. To and I, I hate it around like people I don't know because I'm like I don't know if they're accepting or not. But knowing my coworkers, like some of them would be, but like they already don't like me enough. So I walk in, and I, there's a time clock where I walk in, so I clock in with my ID, because I have one of those fancy IDs that was like the best part of like, actually like, the starting my actual job the day of was like getting that ID, because I was like, oh, this is so official, I love it. And because it has your picture on it, and your name, and your position, I'm like yes. But you get the ID, and you, you have to swipe it to get into the building, and then you swipe it to clock in, and get your fingerprint to clock in. And then you walk in, and to get into like the nursing home side, they're all the residents. Some are sitting by the TV, some are like in the rooms, and some are like crowded outside the, the dining room, even though it's like I start at four, and that's when dinner starts, and I get there like early. So, and then I go into the kitchen um, and just start like making sure things are like clean and like perhaps like, you know, like okay to like for dinner to start at four. Um, and then the residents start coming in and I make sure like they're all right and like ask them, hey, what's up? How's your day? Um, and then they start like filling out the menus. Uh, I take the menus from them uh, and I make sure like they've circled enough like to eat. If they, if they circled like just a starter, like jello and coffee, like no, you, you gotta circle more than that. And then like I try to like prompt them like, hey, what about this? And if they don't, I like circle some for them or like, I'll get them something from the kitchen that they might want. So, and then you get all the menus like in a pile like that I do, and then I bring out like their, it's called salad bar, which is like the starter basically, which you, you can choose from jello, um, salad, or uh, cut fruit, or cottage cheese, and then like whatever drink you want. You can have like any amount of drinks unless you're on like a special diet, which is like a limited thing, or if you have like a thickened diet. You can have like a thickened uh, drink, which is just like kind of like a gel type stuff. Like it's either a thickened nectar thick or honey thick, and honey thick is the thickest. So the, the most disgusting thing though is like thickened water, because it, it just looks like someone spit into a cup over and over and over. And I do not blame them for not drinking it. Um, and then. Once all the menus are in, we because we take them up to the cook and put their diet cards with their names on top. Uh, then bring, bring, uh, the plates start being put up on the line. I bring their plates out to them and make sure it's all right. Because a lot of times they'll say, I didn't order this or I ordered something else because they're forgetful or we genuinely made a mistake. But like 90% of the time, they, they're very forgetful, the presidents. So. Um, but if they like think they ordered something when they didn't, we just switch it out and let them know, hey, you forgot or you made a mistake, but it's okay, I brought it for you anyway. So anything to like avoid conflicts and stuff. Because if they, some of them get very angry, they'll like throw their food or like dump their coffee on the white tablecloth. But it's okay. I mean, I mean they live there, so yeah. Um, 
and then while they're eating and just clean up from like the, the um, frenzy that is like getting out the drinks and everything and um, make sure everything's all right and get them anything they need. Um, and then when they're finished, start t- taking plates and stuff, uh, getting them dessert, which is always like, they'll put on the menu, like the typed up menu that it's like some kind of fruit. We get them ice cream. Like everyone wants ice cream. There's this one guy who always wants Oreos. Like last night, he's like, you got any Oreos? Because we had been out of Oreos for like a week. And I was like, we restocked our snacks. We do have Oreos and his face just lit up. So yeah, we, we had Oreos, so I was very happy. Well, after after dinner's over, we clean everything off. The residents start to get wheeled out by the nurses. Um, but sometimes we have to wheel some of the patients out. And we can't take them to their room. We can only take them as far as the TV room because uh, we're not the nurses, but um, then we start like just stripping the tables and setting them up for breakfast and do everything after, so. Mm-hmm. And that's in about three and a half hours. I, I'm, I'm categorized under health worker because I'm, wor- I'm working in like the nursing home part of it. I'm not, I'm not entirely sure, because I know like I do eventually, hopefully want to go to barber school. That is something like in the back of my mind that I always forget is like my goal. But like, I don't know, because my parents don't support that. So it's like, I don't know. And like, things keep like today. I um, I joined Peoria Pride, their board as a board member. So, what um, appeals to you about barber school? I have no idea. I have no idea. <laughs> but it's like something about being like creative, and it's like hands on, but also like. I just really like it. I really like it and I don't know why, but it's just kind of like fits really well with, and you get to like talk to people as well um, and like relate to them while also like being creative and hands on with like their hair, so. Oh, it's a nine month program typically. Uh, and then at the end you take like a test. It, you do a pen and paper test and like a physical test. Um, and then you get your like certificate or license for like the state that you're in. So, yeah. Is it expensive? Uh, it's a thousand dollars, which for nine months of schooling is not horrible. And that buys like all your supplies that you need, and it, that's like the only thing you pay for. The Bowen Barber School I've been looking at. It's like nine a.m. to four p.m. So, uh, five days a week. So it's probably not, it wouldn't happen, I don't think. I'd be spread a little too thin, so. What do you think you'd have to, where do you think you'd have to sort of be in order to do barber school? Like location-wise, or? No, like, just like in your life, you know what I'm saying? Or like yeah, in, with your yeah. job. Mm, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I'd have to be a good place financially. Um, I'd have to be in a good location. Because right now the closest barber school that I'd be like interested in is in Bloomington. I am in the Peoria area, so it's like 45 minutes, so that's like one way, so 